Voila! Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to another Premium Bandai Master Grade review. Now, it may not be obviously P Bandai because it's not a monochrome box in this case because it's a Vercon kit. The Vercon kits, even if they're P Bandai, have usual Vercon style boxer on them, which is fantastic. This is the Master Grade V2 Assault Buster Gundam. When I first built and reviewed the V2 uh, Master Grade kit when it first came out, I didn't really like it, to be honest. Uh, and when I saw that the Assault Buster was coming out, I really wanted to check it out because I do really love the Assault Buster version of the V2. Uh, with all that stuff on there, it looks so awesome. I really enjoyed the HGUC kit, by the way. But because I didn't like the kit at first, I still hesitated on this for a long time, and it's been, it's been reprinted I think a couple times now, and I finally decided to pick one up and check it out. So I know this does have some new technology in there for the frame, so hopefully that does make it a little bit better on the inside, but at least on the outside it looks awesome anyway. So Also just on a quick side note too, this was available as a full kit or just as an add-on set as well too, so in case you already had the V2, uh, master grade kit then you could get just the just the assault buster part separately if you wanted to but uh, I don't have the original kit that I built and reviewed a few years back now as I did end up getting rid of that one but uh, so I've got the full set here so we're gonna check it out as the full master grade assault buster V2 Gundam. Anyway, here we go. So on the front of this big old box, you've got that beautiful Katoki artwork on there with it transformed in the background there as well too. So you've got that background image, but just beautiful box art there of the V2 Assault Buster. On the ends, you kind of just got the same thing. On the one side here, just some detail images around the kit. It is going to come with a bunch of Katoki style water slide decals there, of course, as well. Got front and back image, what it looks like all loaded up, and then the V2 gun with all the parts separated off of it. Of course, you can build it as either the V2 Assault or the V2 Buster Gundam, I suppose, as well, too. Uh, if you wanted to, if you got multiples of this kit, you certainly do that. There's all the stats and everything. And around on the other side of the box, you got some information there in Japanese and in English, so some cool information for you to check out there. An action pose there flying with all guns out and uh, no list price there on here for this, but obviously with a bigger premium Bandai Master Grade Verka kit, it is going to be a little bit more pricey. And that's of course not to say that the actual kit is going to be all that big, because as we know the Victory Gundam is a little bit smaller than your average Gundam, but let's go ahead and see what we got here. 13 bags of runners and our instruction manual. The instruction manual also looking very nice with a photograph of the kit there in usual Verka manual style, and then some nice gradient there on the text on the top. On the back here you just kind of got the same thing, very nice. On the inside we've got full art and photos and text in here, just like a normal Verka manual, so that's great to see. Lots of reference photos there of the kit, the Mega Beam Shield, the Victory 2 Assault Gundam. So here you can see the loadout of armor and equipment there for the just Assault Gundam, and then over here for the V2 Buster Gundam. So basically with the backpack parts and then with all of the extra armor and the big long Gun on there, what's that called? Uh, I can't see it on here, but I'm sure we'll get to it. So anyway, after that, we just got our parts list, which pretty normal there. And then just going through with our construction, I guess it's just like before, you build the two core fighters first, and then you build the rest of the Gundam after that. On our center pages here, we've got loads of text, and it's all in Japanese on this side, all in English over here on this side. So very cool interview here with Mr. Katoki. And down here, you've got his illustration there of the Gundam looks awesome. It got some more illustrations and some 3D renderings over here, just the development of the kit, so that's also always cool to see. And towards the back of the manual, of course, you've got the transformation, which we'll take a look at, and then our color guide and marking guide for all the water slide decals. So you've got colors, that's all there in Japanese and in English as well too. Painting guide for the pilot figures included in here as well. You also got a little figure of Shaki you're gonna have included in here as well too. Lots of markings to put on this kit, of course, with it being a Verka kit. Let's go ahead and check out the runners. All right, so first off, you are going to have some foil stickers here, mostly just for the eyes and cameras and stuff, but then of course you got these stickers there for those red rings around the joints and stuff. A little bit disappointing that we've only got those for stickers and not as water slides, but we do have plenty of other water slides on here, mostly in white and red, but of course you got a couple of yellow ones up there for like your cockpit uh, one there and the main markings for the shoulder, I guess. And then a bunch of these, there's some gray ones on there I guess too, but mostly red and white, so loads of decals to put on this thing. The only polycaps we have included here is just PC7, a set of gray polycap ball joints. And separately packed, we've also got our shield effect part, which is very nice. You have that uh, lightning bolt kind of effect sprayed on there, and then it's got a nice iridescence to it on the backside. It's just a kind of clear pink 
Now the A-Runner is technically in four colors. We've got some clear parts up there at the top, some white parts here, some red parts here, and you've got two of this A-Runner. Now the reason I say it's in four colors is because you also have this section over here which is cut off of the A-Runner, so there's no actual runner label on this part, it's just kind of off on its own. This is obviously the plated gold. This one you're also going to have two of, but, and just a note on the gold, it's basically similar to the uh, plated gold that was on the Hyakushiki 2.0. This one does look a little bit more yellow, a little bit brighter uh, than that, but it's not like the plated gold that comes with the titanium finish version of this kit. And then if you buy just the part set, not the full kit, but just the uh, upgrade part set for the V2, then in that version, it's just plain molded gold. So in my opinion, this is the best looking version. I like this more than just the molded gold or the plated gold, but you can choose whichever one is best fitting to your personal tastes. Runner B1 here is in a really nice blue color, and then we've also got Runner B2 for a copy of this portion of the runner here. And then we've got Runner C for a bunch of our white armor pieces. We've got two of these. Runner D here also in white for some more armor pieces, as well as our seated pilot figures and our standing figure there. And then Runner E is going to be getting into our inner frame part, this is in a dark gray ABS plastic for these and it's continued on to runner F as well and we've got two of this F runner. Runner G is also in that dark gray color but this is just regular PS plastic not ABS mostly parts on here for the beam rifle and then runner H is our beam saber effect parts the two regular ones and then the beam fan now that would be the end of the regular V2 parts now we get into the assault buster parts starting off here with runner XA this one also in four colors we got blue one little red part up there some clear parts down here and then some dark navy blue there on the side. Runners XB1 and XB2 are conjoined here. These are once again in that dark gray ABS plastic for some new frame parts. And then that's continued on here to runner XC as well. And we've got two of this XC runner. XE is some new parts here in white. And the same for runner XD as well, some more new white pieces as well as runner XE also. So there's the rest of our new armor, uh, white armor pieces. Runner XF1 is some more new pieces here in blue. And we also got runner XF2 for a copy of this middle section of that runner. And finally, runner XG is some more new parts in that plated gold, which does look very nice. So there you have it, guys. There's a, quite a lot of stuff in that box, as you can see, and some nice options with this kit. I mean, obviously, you can make just the regular V2 if you want it, and you've got the gold parts for that, or you can use these some of these gold parts. Uh, instead of making the second core fighter, you can use these on your regular V2 kind of if you wanted to, so that's kind of nice. If you've already got that kit, I suppose. But anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and get this built up, and then we'll talk some more about it after that. Okay, so this review is going to be a little bit different in that I'm going to have to sh kind of show you the different parts first and then we'll turn it into like the full on Gundam. But here is the core fighter. You've got two of these and really nice. The gold on there does look really cool. The pilot figures that you get, the two different pilot figures are different pilot figures there. You have this landing gear, which is just kind of all in clear. That's just like a separate piece that it just kind of rests on. And actually, maybe there's a trick to it, but I can't get it to stay on the landing gear. Once you kind of set it down, it just kind of ends up falling back because of that weight there towards the back end of that. Anyway, here is the other core fighter outfitted with the buster equipment on its backpack. It does look very cool. I was saying uh, during the live stream build of this that uh, it does kind of remind me a little bit of like something from our type, like this little spaceship or something you can imagine in a video game just flying along like this does look pretty cool. And sorry, I'm noticing one of the uh, little attachment pieces on the bottom there had come off. So there you go. It's supposed to have the two of those on the bottom of the kind of wing bits. And you got like kind of the rest of the Gundam body here. Now we do have some changes to the frame parts of this and so I think it is going to be a little bit better in terms of its articulation and stuff compared to the older version of the kit. Let's just take a look at its other main accessories. Basically here is the shield. Now for those uh, red bits there, those are the red stickers, but underneath there you do just have plain clear parts. If you wanted to just have those clear and paint them or whatever, I just threw the stickers on there just so you can see how those will look. But the gold obviously is that molded gold, so no stickers for that. These all can come off of there and you do have a little hole in there. It's gonna be kind of hard to see, but there is a place in there for a round three millimeter peg like you would have like typically for an action base or if you just had like some, like a three millimeter clear rod or something like that, you could make your own effect part for that or something if you wanted to have these little bits flying around on that side. So those all just come off the shield there if you want. This has the attachment points here on the back and a handle there like that for that. So it looks really cool, very nicely detailed and with the gold in there, it looks really nice. And then you have the mega beam cannon here, which actually like this, that part can extend out here that slides out of there like that. And then let's see, our handle will fold up on that side like that. This part also will fold up. This part here also will fold down. So I mean, it's a really cool design in this and all the color separation, everything with the gray 
and white colors all separated like that does look really really nice on this so very cool looking weapon there then our standard beam rifle with the two foil stickers there for that and then these little pop out side cameras also have little foil stickers on each side of these as well so there you go once those are popped out that's how that's gonna look like that and then you have this little bit here on the bottom which will also open up so you got that little uh, grenade a little bit in there but then you do also have this alternate attachment piece I'll put this on a little bit later but basically you have to kind of take off the barrel and do some like part swapping to swap out for putting this uh, grenade launcher there on the bottom of the beam rifle as well too which I prefer it with this on there so I'll definitely uh, be keeping this on there permanently but in case you like just the little bit more standard version there you've got that it does look pretty nice no really uh, notable seam lines really too much on that so that's pretty good you do have some mold lines and everything you will have to sand off on that but otherwise pretty nice design beam rifle there and then we've got all of our parts here for making the uh, assault version now i'll just kind of go over some of these parts a little bit separately before we actually add them onto the gundam so these are the side skirt parts uh, and these little bits will kind of expand out you pull these bits out for the these are actually the vsbrs on the kit so they're actually like laser cannons there you got that will attach onto the side skirts so those will slide out to open up and you can just close those back up like that the knee parts like with the shield have a foil sticker there but it is actually a clear part so if you did just want to have that clear and paint that or whatever however you might like to do that you can just leave that uh, foil sticker off and just have that clear part there and the same thing goes here for this part on the front of the crotch that'll go on there again gold looking very nice and then these shoulder parts as well too no clear parts or anything on these but these also do look very nice and then all of our buster equipment is basically like missile pod attachments that you're going to be adding on to everywhere so like these are onto the sides of the legs and you've got ones that will attach onto the back skirt as well too and then ones that will attach onto the front skirt so two for the front skirts two for the back skirts and two for the sides of the legs now these all have like the doors closed but you have alternate parts that you can swap out to have the actual missiles visible there so if you wanted to have it looking like it's actually about to fire the missiles or something you can make it so that those are visible instead of just these closed doors i kind of like it with just like the the closed doors like that on there for those missile pods it does look pretty cool but of course if you wanted to display it like it's you know attacking or something like that you can uh, swap out those parts pretty easily on these i think and some of the little bits here you've got this action base adapter for when it's in a mobile suit mode and you have this clear action base adapter here as well too for if you want to display the core fighter flying out on its own our tiny little shakti figure there looks very nice very nicely detailed of course as always and of course you've got the super tiny little eye patch part i did put the one on one of the core fighters on the core fighter here with the head inside there for the buster equipment for like the making the buster form i did put that on so you guys will see that on the gundam later and you can see how it looks with and with uh, without so you've got two of those so you can put it on both of the heads if you want or just uh, one off and one on that's how i did it and then like with the master grade wing kits your hands are going to be the type where you just have to swap the fingers so you've got closed fists open hands beam saber holding hands and trigger finger holding hands as well too for your hand options now the molding and detail on this kit is really nice. The only complaint that I will make about this is that these red circles aren't separate red parts. So you do have like here down on the lower leg, it's an actual like frame bit that's exposed there uh, that if you paint that red, it will be super thin, much thinner than what this sticker would have you believe on there. But as for these parts here on the side skirts and the side of the arms, those, especially here on the side of the arms, not being a red ring part there for the side of the arm is very disappointing. So I really wish they would have done that. Here on the side skirts, maybe a little bit more understandable that it's not a separate red part. Still would have been nice though to have those as actually separate pieces rather than having to use stickers. And there are no water slide versions for those as well too. So if you wanted to have those red and not use the stickers, you'll have to do some masking for that, especially. Now, as we saw in the manual, there's a couple different forms you can make there with this. So I showed you this form with basically the core fighter with the buster equipment on there, but you can also make the top fighter and the bottom fighter. I won't show those to you guys, uh, but you guys get the idea. Basically, you add the legs onto the core fighter there, or you add the arms onto the core fighter to make two different versions of that. So with your two core fighters, you can make a top and bottom fighter separately, but you don't have two sets of that backpack equipment, so you wouldn't be able to use that on both at the same time but you could put some of the equipment onto one core fighter and some onto the other but for now let's just go ahead and take a look at how it's going to look with all the just buster equipment added on there just make the victory to buster gundam all right so there it is in the buster form and not too difficult to do i mean you just kind of attach a few things here on in there on the kit the only real problem that i'm having with anything like falling off or anything is the side ankle armor keeps falling off and i seem to remember that happening a lot with the original kit as well too so that's not really been fixed i don't think those parts have been 
haven't touched it all since the uh, now kind of re slightly revamped version of this kit here. But other than that, pretty solid. And the hips are attached via just a polycap ball joint, which is not very ideal. And so those popped out once on me as well too, but you know, not really a huge deal. Those stay on there pretty well for the most part, just when you're manhandling it around, just trying to do the transformation and stuff, those might pop out on you. But I've always really liked the buster form of this one as well. Now I, I do like the full form probably best, but the thing that I really like about the buster form here is that it's a more beefed up, obviously it's got a bunch more equipment and stuff on there, so it's more like a beefed up uh, version of the V2 without so much shiny stuff on it, like the Assault form just has a lot of gold on there. It's a little bit too much gold for me. I like like the full Assault Buster form because it's got that old gold on there, but it's just got so much going on that it just looks really cool. But this is a really cool, like highly weaponized, much more beefy version of the V2 here without so much gold on it. It does look really nice, I think. All right, guys, then here is the assault form. And uh, now I gotta be honest, guys, the more that I'm working with this kit, the more I'm realizing that the uh, minor changes to the frame to, you know, ideally make this kit a little bit better are very minor. They're not really that much different. I still am not really enjoying this kit, I gotta be honest. It looks great, you know, but it's definitely a pain. The articulation in the hips is not really much better because the the thigh is so tall, you can't like put the leg forward without like the top of the thigh pointing back and it pops off the back skirt and then the, the ankle armor parts as I mentioned before keep popping off. You know, simple enough to just glue those in place I suppose. But man is this thing finicky, I mean like with without the ability to rotate the waist at all it definitely hampers your articulation possibilities. Uh, just the, the hip section as I mentioned before is just kind of a pain. The arms are fine, you don't have any uh, backwards movement of the shoulder joint so you can't like tilt the shoulders uh, a little bit back at all. That's a little bit annoying for doing like some nice proper powerful looking poses. All right, let's just skip ahead here to the final form of the Assault Buster gun. I gotta say this, I mean, now you're seeing it as the absolute unit that this thing is supposed to be. It looks amazing, and I I, I want to end this review on a high note. I just want to leave this like this. Typically, you know, towards the end of the review, I'd show you guys some different action poses and stuff. You can do some different action poses, but I just don't want to bother with it. It's just such, it's a pain to work with this kit, to be honest. It just is not really fun. One thing I would definitely recommend you guys do, if you do want to do some action poses with this, is just have some glue on hand. Be ready to just... Uh, glue a couple pieces here and there that are finding you're finding tricky. The massive beam cannon doesn't really hold or attach into the arm very well. It basically just have to hold that in the hand, and it's a massive weapon, and so you really have to have a little bit of a balancing act. It doesn't hold it in the hand really super securely by any way. I really wish there would have been some sort of attachment piece, like with the shield, how it attaches into the back of the arm. Something like that for that massive cannon as well would have been nice. And yeah, the polycap ball joints for the hip are really starting to bother me the more that I work with this kit. They're just not very tight at all, you know, it's a, the legs are, you know, relatively heavy, heavy enough anyway for their master grade legs, so they got all the inner frame and everything in there. Uh, to be held on there just via polycap ball joints, and it's just, they, they don't really stay on there too well, so the legs kept falling off. But that said, I mean, just looking at the kit as it is here now, as you guys are seeing it as we wrap up the review, it looks amazing, so there's no doubt that the kit looks awesome. It just depends on what you really want to do with it. If you want to do some action poses and stuff, you're going to have a little bit of a hard time with that. Just be prepared to do a little bit extra work. Uh, if you don't want to go through with doing that extra work and everything, then just go for, you know, just a, a pose like this, just standing or whatever, just floating, kind of. Uh, no action base included, unfortunately, so you will have to provide that on your own. But still, very cool kit. I am not sure if I would recommend this over the HG. The HG is significantly cheaper, for one, because it's not a P Bandai kit and it's, you know, smaller. It's an HG, of course. Um, I, I really enjoyed the HG. Of course, the HG does take a lot more uh, masking, things like that. Obviously, it doesn't have all the color separation, all the details that we have here on the Master Grade. The Master Grade here, this kit it is, is very nicely detailed. You have a lot of little bits of, like, a gray frame poking out through the armor and stuff like that, which is really nice about this kit. So. It looks fantastic. The HG not going to look near as detailed, but still I think the proportions and just the general design of the HG is also really nice as well too. So, you know, if, if you're a fan of the design and you're not sure you really want to spend the money to get this version, I would definitely still recommend the HD version. It's still a very viable option for you. But, you know, if you do want something that's a little bit bigger, a little bit more detailed, and definitely looks very impressive, you know, without doing too much with it. And it comes with all the water slides too, which is another great thing as well. And I also shouldn't forget to mention, just to remind you guys that you have the beam shield and the beam fan you can use as well too with this. So you got some other 
cool beam effect parts that you can use that I haven't shown you guys now actually on the kit, but those are also included with it. So while the kit is a little bit of a pain, it's definitely a great design and it looks really cool. So that's gonna be it for my review there for you guys. Take that as you may. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section below. Of course, if you have any other further questions, you can leave those down there for me as well. I'll get back to you on that. And just thank you as always to USA Gundam Store for making it all possible, guys. Do check the link to USA Gundam Store there down below. Wouldn't be able to do these cool P Bandai reviews and stuff like that for you guys without their support as well. So use my coupon code there as well to save 10% off everything on the store. And just thank you guys all so much for your support, whether it's liking the video, commenting, subscribing, all of that is greatly appreciated. And until next time, guys, I'll just wish y'all a great day. I'll see y'all later. Bye, guys.